most people calling water kefir or water kefir. It comes under so many different names, but these are amaze bulbs. Have a look at those. Have a look at those beautiful babies. These, once again, are symbiotic colonies of bacteria and yeast, and these are just the most amazing little babies. It makes the best ginger beer. I know I gave you a recipe for ginger beer where you just do a bug, not a plant. A ginger beer plant is totally different. It already holds its own cultures. It's very similar. A ginger beer plant is very similar to the kombucha scoby. But we can create a bug just with fresh ginger and feeding it sugar and using the mighty invisible organisms from the air. So you must give it air once again and that will give you a bug. That bug you can use to make any drinks. You can add watermelon juices to it. You can add anything you like and create some wonderful fizzy beverages. In my opinion, this is the best to make your ginger beer. It's safe. Your bottles won't explode. It's just so full of good bacteria and yeast. I like to keep it simple and I feed it ginger in the first ferment. I only do one ferment. I don't muck about and do second bottles. But you can, and you can, these grow. These, these grow like you wouldn't believe. You normally get another lot of that in your next, I like to ferment them for 48 hours, not just 24 like we'll do in the milk ones coming up next. But what I just love to do is leave it for two days and come back and they've doubled. You can share them with people, you can do so much with them. They're very good for eczema. Anyone that has eczema, you can actually rub it onto eczema. It, it's just powerful. It's just really powerful stuff. So that here, that's the little, what we call it is a grain. It's not familiar with any other grain. It's not related to like wheat or grains like that. It's just a name for them. But once again, it's just that little community of all different strains of bacteria and yeast. And what you will what you will produce will be different in each home. I do have a have some that has been tested, and I can give you all the different types of lactobarbars, all the different lactic acid, and everything else that it produces. If you want the science side of it, so let's get started. So we've drained, we've strained that out. So with that that we've strained after a forty eight hour stand, we could add some flavors, exactly the same as the kombucha. You can add. You add, add some flavours, leave it out for another one to two days and you'll have a lovely fizzy drink if you add something with sweetness. I use this liquid for so many things rather than for drinking. It's the most beautiful food preparation to soak your dried fruit because it, it'll plump them up. You put dried figs into there, it'll just plump them up to deliciousness. Beautiful to put on your rolled oats in the morning. Just absolutely superb. It has so many uses. You can put all your dried fruit in and make a, a fruit cake. And it'll just, overnight when you wake up, it'll absorb it all and absorb a lot of that concentrated sugar too. And all you then you have to do is drop in an egg and some flour and bake your cake. How easy is that? You can use that to make a starter, like a, like a sourdough starter. You can just put equal quantities, say two cups of the liquid, two cups of flour, Put it into a, 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 a same sort of container like that, a nice little small one, and you and leave it out on your countertop. Leave it for at least a day before it's in a little bubble away a bit, and then you've got a starter. You can use it for pancakes. You can use it for muffins. You can even make a bread with it. And as you draw from it, you add back. You add back more liquid, and you add back more flour, and you've got a starter forever. How easy is that? It is just the most amazing little grain. As I say, I use it for much more than just drinking. When you get so many of them, you can divide them up and what we're about to do with just the water, you can replace that water with coconut water. You can even replace it with a coconut cream. You can replace it with a coconut milk. You can make milk products from it, dairy-free milk products, and this will ferment it. Don't then put it back to a sweet sugar. Just keep that lot going for, for your milk. My chickens absolutely love it. Even my pussy cats will eat a couple of them out of my hand. They're really tasty. When my son was young, I used to put juices through them, like beetroot juices, and I'd dehydrate them, and they'd pop, and they'd be lovely little candies. 
so much you can do with them. So let's get going. So that that there is strained off. So that goes into into um like I said, you can just drink it straight away. Use it for soaking. You can soak nuts in it. You can do everything with it, or just put it into again a nice long narrow neck bottle. You can add if you like. You could add in this case. I made this, that's a coconut water one. It tastes really like coconut champagne. And I added a little bit of just a tiny weeny bit of the blue spirulina and a little bit of ginger to give it a little tiny bit of fizz. And you'll see there, you'll see the little bit of fizz that's bubbling up there. Look at that. Isn't that the most beautiful drink? Yeah, it's lovely. You can make mimosas with it if you do your coconut. If you do it in like just coconut water, you can then, when you go to serve it, serve it half orange juice and half that and you've got a beautiful champagne mimosa. It is just beautiful. So let's get ready to say we can do it. So I'm going to work on about three tablespoons of the grain in there. Now, an easy way, you know me, I don't like measuring, that is that you can just do the same quantity as sugar. But in this case, I'm doing a little bit more. I've got a quarter of a cup of sugar, three tablespoons of the grain, a, a half a lemon. I'm going to put a lemon because this is going to be a quick way. This is one that you don't need to do your second for me. So we're just going to put a half of my lemon from my tree and a little slice, a little slice of ginger, and that's going to go into the first ferment. You can add, it loves minerals. You can add things. You don't need to put the ginger and the lemon in. You could put in things like a little pinch of bicarb soda because it loves that. All fermented drinks love a little bit of bicarb soda because it just helps with that alkaline rate and same as for our bodies. So that's how it works. So let's get going. So we've got now the sugar needs to be dissolved. It needs to be thoroughly dissolved. And again, you don't want you don't want hot you don't want hot water. So, but what I use is I dissolve that first and I use one of my herb brews. My favourite drink of all, and anyone that knows me that comes to my home will know that I always have a perpetual tea of ginger, and I can't put my finger in there because it's been boiling away, ginger and lemongrass from my garden. And that just goes along, goes along for a long time. I call it perpetual because it's forever just boiling away and I'm always adding things to it. So we just make sure that that's thoroughly, thoroughly dissolved so that we don't have any sugar granules because the little grains don't want the little granules hitting onto them. So that water there is, is warm enough to dissolve that sugar without boiling it away and boiling all the belly out of it. And then we just add a little bit more water. Uh, what did I tell you? Just enough water to sort of get it, get it, get it covered and to put into your little container. And then I'm going to add that half a lemon and a slice of ginger. That is just going to be beautiful. So into there, that will go. Le always leave a room because you, they will expand, they will grow. So you need to leave some room so that otherwise they'll explode out. And then that's nice and cool. And I'll just add those to it. We always use a breathable cloth for any of these beverages because they require the air to get in. So something like muslin, like baby's muslins. I love to go go op shopping. I'm the, I'm the recycling queen and I love you going op shopping and you'll get at the, at the charity stores, you get a lot of the baby wraps, which are wonderful and you can just cut them up and use little pieces. Always be careful of using cheesecloth because the holes are really big and that can let in any bugs because all these have sugar in them, it can, can attract bugs. So what I always do is I put them on little saucers so that the bugs can't get in there and you can just put a little bit of water in there. In our tropics here, anyone that's, I know some people are joining me from this wonderful tropics that we live in with all this heat, that you, really in the hot summer it needs to be at a nice steady temperature. And what you can do is you can put them into like a foam box, something like this, and just put a, like a, a cold ice brick in there. You don't have to keep topping the cold ice brick up. You just put that in there. That's only for you know, one, one, one to two months maximum of the year when we've got that stinking, stinking hot weather, and that will, that will keep them going. You can put them to sleep if you're going on holidays. You can just feed them some nice sugar water. You don't put the lemon or the ginger in, and you can just pop it in your fridge. Just don't leave it in there for a long, long time because it needs to be fed. They're like grandpa. 
If you put Grandpa in the corner and you stick him in his rocking chair, it won't rock forever unless you feed Grandpa. And these are all the same. They're members of my family. They need to be fed. So yeah, you can put them to sleep, but don't put them forever. Don't freeze any of these. I know people will put grains in the freezer. That's just not good because high, high temperatures and really freezing cold temperatures will destroy that good, good balance of the bacteria and yeast. And that's what we're after. So that, that's it. You've got, you've got, once again, you've got, you've got everything. You've got all the downloads. You've got ways to use them. And, and once again, if you have any problems, just shoot me a message and I will, with much, much pleasure, shoot them back. So I'll see you soon for our milky field kefir, which is not related to those at all, but balls. <laughs>